Welcome to the BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, episode three today, now in the BBTV Trusted Trilogy with author Dr. Toby Travis. So hello for the final time, Toby. Hello, Malcolm. Thank you again. Great to be here. Yes, I, I am. I'm I'm so absorbed with your book and your thinking uh, and the bridge concept. I know from my wife's experience as chair of governors of the great similarity in leadership traits between a school head and a business and business owners. Now, many of both sides would disagree, but I see so much within your trusted framework that could be applied to businesses, especially those providing a service, which is, as after all, what a school does, isn't it? Can you give us the benefit of your expertise and show us more how to apply what's in your book to a business? Well, again, what we're really talking about are people management skills. This is really what it's all about, is how do we interact uh, with, with those whom we're supervising? And then it's also how do we um, reflect on our business practices and protocols. I was just uh, talking with uh, an organization yesterday where I posed the question, I said, well, how many practices in your current business are based on distrust? So in other words, you know, kind of this idea is we were talking about remote workers, you know, and they were talking about these systems of how they're going to be able to check in and make sure people are doing their work. And I'm like, why would you do that? You, you are assuming you need something in place to keep people, you know, uh, doing the work. Well, then really co that comes back to well, why do you even hire them if you don't trust them? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, so even just to do an analysis of our practices that are that are built on distrust is, is a good place to start. To like, okay, have we, have we organized ourselves in a creating an environment of, of distrust? Because what we've found in... In environments, business environments that have a high level of trust, it's actually cheaper to run the business, right? It increases the bottom line. Uh, but there is, a, there is a lot of work that has to be done in intentionally accomplishing that. But again, yeah. the, the similarities between managing a, a school organization and managing a business organization, it is about supporting people. And how do we support people well? You know, as a superintendent of schools, my biggest job is supporting principals, making sure those principals are successful in their support of their teachers and coordinators. Uh, it is a support role. It's not, it's not king of the world. It's uh, well, you think about Jim Collins' work, good to great. What a what a great yeah. book and what great work. And he's got good to great for the social sector. But you know, Collins talks about the level five leader. The two key um, descriptors of that level five leader is they are passionate about mission fulfillment and they're humble. You know, they understand it's not all about them. It's about how they support a team. And the, those principles are universal, universal. Yeah. Now, since the pandemic, um, a lot of leaders have started to understand, some are catching up at the moment, that um, the technical skills that they thought they had sitting in a corner office, firing off memos and everything like that, are not what's needed today. They need to be a conscious leader. They need to have compassion. Now, that has taken, that takes time and understanding. And I had a conversation the other day with uh, uh, a vice uh, head, of, head of vice head or deputy head of a school who retired early because she felt that there was, there was just far too much pressure on the curriculum and not enough time, as you quite rightly say, to gain the trust of people. So is there a balance to be had here? There is a balance and that that is the challenge of leadership. Um, but what we find over and over again, Malcolm, is if we don't prioritize people over programs or people over product, um, we are not going to get where we want to be as far as whatever the, the mission or the vision is of the organization or the school. Um, so if, you, if you've got a, if you've got a air on one side or the other, no, air on the people side. And you, you, what you will find is no, it, it, you, it will, it will improve. It will get to again, mission fulfillment faster than if you burn up relationships or burn through people. Uh, always, always people over product. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of leaders have learned that in the in the pandemic because obviously the great resignation is yeah. uh, is spelling it out for them as people are leaving and they're losing talent within the the business. And you, as you well know, talent within teaching is 
hard to find at times. It really is. So, well, we've been in, in, a, in a teacher shortage for a number of years, but the pandemic has just exacerbated that uh, tremendously. And so, you know, the great resignation has been happening in education for years now. Uh, mm-hmm. We have fewer and fewer graduates from education colleges and universities. So the pool is getting smaller and smaller. And yet the needs are just as big, if not just more. Just as big, yeah. Ever. Right. Yeah. Education, right. education, education, as a former prime minister said in the England. Now, um, just before we finish this uh, uh, trilogy, Toby, um, I'm going to throw something at you. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you 30 seconds or I'll, I'll stretch it a little bit more than that because you're a nice person um, to give us the top three reasons why a business owner should go out and buy this book. <laughs> Well, first of all, it's going to help them recognize and understand the critical issue of trust, that it is the issue. And if we jump past it, where uh, we are, we are really doing ourselves um, a disservice in our commitment to business success. So first of all, just the, having that understanding of how important this issue is. Um, and others have recognized it as well. So that's not a new concept, but what is perhaps new is this idea of how do we assess it and then build some action planning that what are we going to do different on Monday? That's a real value of this book and of the work that I have the privilege pleasure and privilege of doing with a variety of leaders and a variety of organizations is we're able to go and do an assessment of the trust levels of leaders and leadership teams, do action planning, short-term goal planning, actually, to figure out what are we going to do different in our practice. And then uh, I guess number three would be uh, just to also reflect on a variety of stories that folks are really going through the same thing you are and have found ways to get over these hurdles, uh, to get through crisis. Now, we are, yes, we're in a pandemic. It is going to end. What we do during this pandemic, if, especially in how we value our employees, will make a huge difference in where we go in the future. So mm, how, how was that for my, my 30 second pitch? Way, way over 30 seconds, but who cares? Because Sorry. the value of the book is justifies it totally. Uh, now, let me give uh, viewers and listeners details of your URL, your website address, which obviously you can see on the screen behind me. Viewers, uh, but listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's trustedbook.info. Trustedbook.info. Toby's book, this one is called Trust Ed. The Bridge to School Improvement, and it's published by trustedschool.org. So embracing lateral thinking is good for personal development. My thanks to Dr. Toby Travis for so succinctly showing us how to become a trusted leader using his framework. I love the bridge. I love the bridge. And relating it to an environment all of us have experienced, education. Thanks, Toby, for a great trilogy. Thank you, Malcolm. My pleasure.